Hello everybody and welcome back to Wappleville. We have something here out on the pallet from a new Kickstarter. The campaign's underway now. I think there's maybe a week left at this point. I'll take you over to the campaign in just a second. But we've got a few interesting elements on this. So black, as you can see by those two little references on the bottom, that's going to be sort of the theme for the hat and the coat and everything else. It looks like we've got ourselves a glowing arrow here. And we've got some glow that's going to be happening right here, this little oculus piece over there. So we're going to sneak in some optic source lighting, and some black. And we're going to do that with our, you know, let's grab some of our Pro Acryl Transparents. We've been using these a lot lately. And we've been certainly using these a lot lately because we've been doing, well, a lot of object source lighting. Let's head on over to the campaign real quick here. I do believe this is the... i uh, give a few seconds to come up here. Now, like I said, last time I checked this, there was uh, eight days left. Uh, oh, still eight days to go. There we are. There's a lot of figures in this. I, it takes a while to scroll through the whole thing. I'm not going to do that, but, well, look, there, there you go. <laughs> And I think there are expansions and other things. It's it's a lot of different stuff. So it's sort of one of those RPG type of things. It can be done in solo play. And all of the figures, you can see there's sort of your infantry size, but you get to colossal size. So there we go. So Vanessa, Heir of Ruin. So see, we've got kind of that bluish black thing going. The armor there on the side. So we'll probably refer to this again a few times. So you get sort of that, it's shiny, although it is dark colored armor. And there's your glowing weapon right there and the Oculus. We got some bright red hair on this too. And let's see if I can scroll down a little bit for it to get to some of those really big old things. But you know what? <laughs> Actually, I got one of those larger things right here. And I'll show you a bit of a size comparison. So there you go. <laughs> So I think each of the factions tends to have one of these larger pieces like this guy. And then you sort of work your way down. There's some terrain pieces. But really interesting. I mean, that's, that's some serious, lots of layers of textures there. And I'll be painting these on some live streams and in Patreon videos. So you'll be seeing more of these guys. Wow, I didn't even notice those were actually all serpents right there. That is none too shabby. That's a pretty nifty little thing. And we've got, so again, see a larger, not as large as that guy, but sort of your kind of a minotaur here, carrying a, his cannon around. That's going to be really fun to do. But we'll get back to this. And like I said, we're using the Pro Acryl Transparents for the most part. These are sort of like the contrast paints, like the clear and liner paints. We got black, purple, blue, brown, red, orange, yellow. So those are your clears. And then in the more opaques, we've got stuff like the pale green and gray blue. Think of these as sort of the maggot white and pale flesh of the, the Reaper clear exercises. Bright Ivory, this is something that I've used as my white, so to speak, for several times. Oh, look at that. Hey, thanks, Trevor. The chat is doing its thing. That is outstanding, which means I can just get into painting here instead of messing around with that. Now, I'm going to get some of those miniatures off the painting table and out of the way here. We'll approach this kind of similar to what we've done lately. This is just water in here. There's no mediums or anything like that. As I've said before, that is the nifty advantage of stuff like the Reaper Clears and these transparents from Pro Acryl here. You don't need that contrast medium. Uh, I'm going to get down here on the base. I have to decide, do I make these vines or do I give them a bit of a greenish touch or not? It doesn't have to happen right now, but what I am going to do is just get some so this is actually some blue-black. This is an opaque color right here. So it's not necessarily all about just the transparency with these initial glazes. It can also be 
We'll add some opaques in there too. And we just let this mix. And well, it's definitely possible with the contrast paints. I've done it certainly in other videos. I don't know. I think this is, this is a more natural use for it again. Not messing around with the contrast medium and such. You don't have to worry really about the watermarks either. That's another nifty thing. Well, I guess they're not necessarily watermarks with the contrast paints, but they, they tend to pool and do some weird things. So I've always liked about the clears that just you don't get that pooling effect. Now I am going to turn the brightness down a bit at least until we get this early stage out of the way here. Now you can see we talked about painting black and everything else and what are we doing? We're kind of starting out with browns and grays. Black is never really black. I mean if you're going to paint a miniature and I've had this happen where people say well that's not really that doesn't look black that just looks like some bluish grays that are very dark. Well congratulations that's what black is. If it was just plain old black there would be absolutely no highlights or shadows or anything like that. It would just be black. And it just it does boggle the mind where, where people just instantly go well we're going to paint some black Templars and we're just going to paint them black. That That's just that's not quite how it works. <laughs> and I know that maybe upsets people sometimes but wear a black sweatshirt like I do pretty much almost all the time and then look and see when you've got it by natural daylight it looks one way and when it's by oh so there's your here let's get some of this gray blue in there too let's say fluorescent light almost looks a little bit greenish uh, you get if it was by incandescent bulbs it would look almost kind of on the yellowish side because that's just that's how the physics of light works that's just what it does you know, get back into some more of the, again, that's the transparent black there. And now we've pretty well, again, what we're trying to do is wipe away, just get rid of that primer as soon as possible, like this, because anything next to white, or it's a very light gray, it's actually kind of a tan white primer mixed together. It's the usual Badger Steiner res. And I'll show you that in a second as this lets itself dry but what we'll do is we're going to take one of these guys right here no oh my goodness wow we have a whole bunch of people here let's say oh hey tyler how's it going yeah you know that those that, yeah come on you know that i painted those tomb kings in the parking lot before the tournament i mean geez that's how that goes <laughs> sorry i just couldn't resist that was actually uh oh the operation sting it was a bolt action tournament People said, yeah, you just painted that in the parking lot, didn't you? Right outside the door here. So, oh, and Aerox Minis, how's it going? Oh, and Kamitrion, the notifications do work finally. Well, let's see. Here it is 1.42 in the morning. I wanted to get just a little bit earlier start because, well, pfft. I think I've been up till past six o'clock in the morning the last three days or something like that. That has not been super fun. So let's get our some red hair under here and just sort of finish off what I kind of referred to. Well, the initial glazes as part of the shaded base coat phase. So you can see now the the primer mostly out of the way. But when we took that sponge to this, we were able to bring back some of the right cheer. So again, Badger Dino Res. This is a nifty sort of a sandy color, a little hint of flesh tone in it. So that's a nice, that's kind of neutral one. Really nice. So we've got our red. Oh, let's just move that a little bit. Now from here. Let's start to play around with, oh, look at this, Faded Ultramarine. Yes, indeed. Oh, I missed the introduction. These are the Pro Acryl Transparents again. I was using the Green Stuff World paints on the latest Patreon 
series and I just I wanted to get back to some some things that are a little bit more familiar like these here I see a little area I just gotta hit there so Zach can start to work back with some more opaque colors here we'll do it on these rocks Got a little bit of wet and wet blending going on. Now the thing with the the pro acrylics, though, yeah, the transparent paints sort of like the your contrast paints, but once you get into stuff like the faded ultramarine and that pale green and pale blue, those babies are opaque, and they're gonna cover. And that's just it's it's no big deal, but it's something you want to keep keep your keep your eye out for. Now I just went into some of that blue black and now we start to see we start to take this away from the warmer browns and start to make it a little bit more on the grayish side. I think we're not going to go too intense with the with the object source lighting effects here. It is almost more like Oh, what would you say, a little flashlight or almost like she's a little lighter or something, or a candle flame maybe. So not quite so intense as some of the glows that I've done in the past. See, and I don't mind if some of that initial glaze sort of mixes in there. You can see we're not dry brushing. we got plenty of paint on that brush. And you can already see that this, this is, again, a little cheap craft brush one of those what 35 cents a piece variety and once they do get beat up just a bit they start to become more of a filbert brush now let's see if I can start to play around with a little bit of this green in here and we'll just like we did before we're gonna let that sort of mix in here just sort of using a feathered brush stroke here looking to pick up a few of the just some of the raised areas and see what we have here there is a lot of filigree actually a lot of these have this pretty intense filigree on them interesting now the like I said I'll put in the description a link to the Kickstarter and then you can look through all that through all that info for yourself because that's going to say it way better than I ever could so I might as well just go direct to the source for the information about the gameplay and everything else and what the the boards entail and all the extra pieces there's there's a lot of stuff that comes with it though I gotta say that no oh, hey Bethany how's it going glad that you could make this one here I know it's a little bit earlier than, than usual and sometimes when I go earlier it can sometimes be difficult for you to catch it but I was just I was hoping to be able to end this maybe a little bit earlier than I don't know 5 36 in the morning or something like that because woof, I needs to catch up on some of me sleep and it's we're getting that much closer to Adepticon. So, you know what? I'm going to actually grab a just a spot of that blue in there. And you can see we're constantly. Even, yes, it's black, but we want to have some actual color to this. There's nothing that says I can't glaze black over the top. Now I'm looking at her crossbow. It seems like there are some actual wooden elements to it. So look, we got we got some clear orange over here. Oh no, transparent orange. I'm thinking about those Reaper clears so much. So one thing we spot it a little bit. Oh, look at that. Just a hint of it there. Wow, there's a la lot of elaborate just tracery in this. So that's it. It's interesting whenever you do new sculpt something from a, a new game or whatever. It, it's always pretty interesting to see how certain things are sculpted. You know, the, do they have lots of buckles on them? 
You know, is is the buckle craze over? Is buckle apocalypse? Are we not going to see as much of that now? Maybe that would be nice. You know what? Here, I'm actually gonna just fool around. Maybe I'm thinking of some of that as almost being a little bit more on the gold-ish side. So again, that's just water right there. So we're back into some of the faded ultramarine again. And I won't mess around too much with these before we start to say, okay, what's going on with our object source lighting? And we try to put that in as early as possible all the time. Here, let's grab a little bit of that red. Now, remember, this style fluorescent paint is going to be really, really watery. But it, it really does the, the trick. It's really, for as watery as it is, it's pretty darn intense. And I won't necessarily show them here, but just look at the last, oh gosh, what would you say, eight live sessions, and most of them have been object source lighting of different colors. Some of it's blue, some of it's more magenta. So again, I'm just trying to map this out real quick here as soon as I can. Because once you know, all right, this is where a light source is, that's going to dictate everything around it. Because I've, well, I've been there. You know, we, we did the object source lighting back in the day, and it was one of those things where you just sort of tapped it on at the end. You were done with everything else, and over the top of that, you painted in your object source lighting. And, and then I realized, well, that just makes zero sense because I've painted over a whole bunch of stuff that I never needed to paint in the first place. And you can see we're starting to already get ourselves a, a hint of glow there. A little bit more here. Let's start to get some skin tone work in and that's not super difficult. It's going to take a red. It's going to take some some yellows here. I'm even going to let a little bit of that green work its way in. And then we we can do a little bit of a, a check here. Here, let's see. What we got so we've got see kind of a nice little mid-tone skin color right there. Oh, husband was asking, what state do you come from? I am born and bred in Chicago, Illinois. So we are very much in that center of the country type of thing. Very much in the center. We are not super close to Lake Michigan. We are out in the on the southwest side of the city. There. So that is why you see me in the White Sox gear all the time. Because, well, being from that whole south side of the city, that that's the team. Now, of course, Aussie rules. It's it's still the Bulldogs, and well, we'll. It was it was nice to see him somehow get into the playoffs last year, or finals footy. Right, I guess is the more accurate term. But hopefully, they won't get smoked in the first round again. So I see. I start to add some lighter tones in here let's yeah I'm starting to see some work I'm starting to see some gold trim so that that's important starting to see that gold trim so now that I know that's there we'll try and keep awareness of that here let's actually try to we're gonna grab some some of our I don't know I'll grab a little bit of our orange here too I'm just making a few different possible just initial gold colors here. And remember, when you add that, any of those opaque colors, boy, it's going to get 
it's going to get opaque and it covers. That's the amazing thing, especially after using a different type of paint for so long. On that, that Harad series there. And I am just... Okay, I see some more here. We got it here. And we're just going to glaze over these two. I just want to make sure... Just like the object source, yeah, you know, we'll make the buckle gold too. So this is why we make our adjustments now rather than later. Yeah, so just going to completely change that around because uh, why not? What the heck? Why not? And, and yes, these early stages, they're going to be rough. They're going to be really rough. It's, we're not just painting one part of this until it's done. We're working on the entire figure at the same time. We're working on all surfaces. And it's a question that, that comes up an awful lot. So if you were just working on one figure and I said, ha ha, how, how quaint. One, I, I would be nice to be working on less than 100 figures at a time. Oh, I see some buckles. We have identified the buckles. Now, while we've got ourselves some yellow here, I'm just going to mix that and make myself some greens. I didn't even bother putting green out on the palette because I knew I could just sort of make it with what I had. And we had some viney things that really runs all through all of this. I didn't even notice it until I think I just was about to hit go on the on the video here and I was like, what the heck is that? Oh, that's those are like little vines there apparently. But now I can get a little more along the lines of browns into there. So let's let's look at some things that maybe have some object source lighting on. So again here if this is one of the more recent videos you can see that the lighting it just we Work that in as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And then, I know on that one I was changing some of the colors around. So here's another one. This is some blue object source lighting here. And again, that it started. we started off with the object source lighting instead of just sort of tacking that on later. Oh, the only one who's at, oh, going for the pies. Well... I mean, speaking of finals, they they were in the top four. Actually, they, oh, they they had they had a crazy. I uh, was well. I don't think there was an, but it was darn near an overtime match. That was a wild and crazy match, if I remember right. In their finals game last year, it wasn't. Well, it couldn't have been against Geelong. It was it wasn't against West Coast, was it? Ah, it might have been against West Coast. Feel free to tell me if I got that wrong or not. So, see, we just we block that in with the bigger brush. Just get it in there as fast as we can, and you know, then you can go to a smaller brush or whatever. And here, let's just make some different browns. Here, that's just some of the orange. Add it in. And then do a little bit of glaze. It knocks that down. All of a sudden, not so bright anymore. Do some of that over in here and over here. It's don't uh, don't hesitate to work back and forth. You know, it's. Now, there's a lot of people, you, you, you do all your darks first, and then you highlight later, or you start completely lighter and you just keep glazing and glazing away. In some ways, you're just better off starting in the middle and then work your way out to the sides. Because, as I talk about it ad nauseum, it is all about context. You want that context. And... Like here, how light should this gold trim be? Well, if, if I'm 
working on the black right next to it or the blue black or whatever it's just, it's once again it's going to give me a better idea of where it is I need to go now let's see just how much lighter we want to go with this if this is going to be the one light source like this we better find out right away how light that's going to be because uh, how many times have I talked about this I'll see people that are doing object source lighting or whatever and it is darker physically darker than the surface that's supposed to be illuminated which just makes no sense none whatsoever now of course if we've got a, a glow cast by that we have to think just what's the extent of that oh, do I want some of that to be cast onto the back of the crossbow here oh what the heck you can always glaze that down So now something like this that has all of these these layers of surfaces tends to lend itself pretty well to things like this sort of glazing. Now I can start to say that yeah, you know, how bright do I want the hair to be? Thing is. I'm just going to get a little touch of red in there, but we got to get back in with that yellow. Otherwise, it starts to just turn pink. And we, I don't think her hair is meant to be pink. But what we'll do is, I think we'll do that little nifty thing where the hair, what am I saying, it's that kind of shiny, almost the, the cartoon-like thing where you have this line of highlights here because it's, it's got some shininess to it. And then maybe a little bit of reflected light on the bottom. Where else? Ah, oh, we got some here down there too. I'm going to go a touch lighter with that, but maybe not quite so. I want it to be as orange as our flame. We want to get a little bit of separation from that. Uh, let's see. Here, let's go. Calling with how oh, nice you to come out of the closet. Boy, oh boy. Well, that's what is it? Twenty nine flag or cups premierships that Collingwood has won over the years for the pies. And well, they're always. It's always Collingwood and Essington is the Anzac Day game, if I remember right. The, the finer points of Aussie rules football here while we paint because why not and as they would say play on and that's what we're going to do here man if we want this to be let's say a bit darker I'm going to grab some of that purple actually it's just sitting there mind its own business not really doing much and Let's see, well, it's not just about shading it, it's about tinting it. And boy, there's been a lot of that conversation in that latest army painting series talking about glazing and how it's not just about to make things darker, it's also maybe shift something a little more green, shift something a little more red, a little more blue. Speaking of a little more blue, oh, let's see. What can we use glazes if we don't have one? Oh, that's three I'd ask. What can we use for glazes if we don't have... Oh, the you mean the, the transparent paints? I, I don't quite know. If you don't, don't mind repeating the question or, or anything like that, that would be handy. 
Oh, yeah, I said you were talking about versus West Coast. Oh, that was okay. I I thought I was right about that, that it, that was the game. That was okay. Yeah, that was, none of that stuff is very fun. And it's regular season games, oh, disappointing, but in in finals play that's never that is always unfortunate well, and i think it well it sort of left both teams in bad shape for the the rest of the finals there because that sort of a game can really take a lot out of you Now, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of the, again, that's the transparent black and mixing it with some of the blue here. We're making another bit of a glaze. You know, and if you don't have these, like I said, the, the contrast paints are pretty darn similar. If you don't have these or contrast paints, the Reaper clear and liner paints are pretty darn similar. And I've done, geez, I've done videos using all three of them. So just uh, like I said, you can you can search. There's a playlist with just YouTube live sessions, so you can search that, and I'm sure locate one that that talks about the Reaper clears. And I use them pretty much the same same way as this, same idea. There are there's always differences between paint lines. Uh, the pro acryl stuff the big thing about that is that the the regular paints those those cover like crazy doesn't matter whether they're yellow or whether they're a darker color they're going to cover they're really going to cover so i'm going to take again that's some of the blue gray I'm looking to work some of that into the pants here just to yeah doing a little bit of a glaze here And we can always go back into this, lighten this up. But for now, I get a little bit more of the transparent black in there. How's about some more? Now I don't have. I meant to bring out my my ring wraith, which actually was in the that first Lord of the Rings battle report. So check that. That's in my uploads. And if you're looking at Lord of the Rings, check out my Lord of the Rings content. And now there's battle reports there. The new larger filming area is being actually set up now. I always talked about it for a long time. Now it's actually starting to become more of a reality, which makes me all kinds of excited. So I can start painting some terrain. Now I don't even get me started on the Red Wings. Well, that's un unfortunately I've been trying to get people to understand that it was it was a great run for the Blackhawks with the the three Stanley Cups. I mean, we all enjoyed those. We everybody loves a parade, but that eventually that kind of what goes up comes down, and usually in Chicago it comes down fast, and usually it comes down really hard and. People don't necessarily even know that it's happening. But I, I think we're... That's all kind of in the rearview mirror, sadly. The XFL has been surprisingly entertaining. It's really... It's the openness of it, actually. That's what intrigues me. And so this is starting to work in some lighter stuff. These are really... They look light here, but these are barely a dark middle tone by comparison. And we're going to keep going back and forth on these two. And what we start to do is maybe even see, start to sketch in a few of those highlights. Because it, it almost seems like that shiny leather, I guess. And that's what we're going to try and go for here in some of these areas. Now, if you ever want to see what the 
finished things look like that especially on the live sessions where I just can't I can't post pictures I do have now actually on the YouTube channel I'm starting to post finished images of things but see that Instagram account over there you follow me out there that's where you'll see the the finished images of a lot of these projects here used to do the blog thing but it's just it's too hard to actually get people over there and it takes a minimum of an hour and a half to two hours to just do one blog post and a whole lot less to do an Instagram post oh a fraction of the time so see now we start to inject a little bit more of a some lights over in here into this this is looks like the one piece of armor that's actually on this which obviously has the whole witch hunter vibe going on it definitely the witch hunter vibe there is filigree galore I hope you can see that and and I, I hope I'm holding it at a decent angle for you so that you can see it And like I said, what looks so incredibly light here is really not that much more than a middle tone. And you know, look at this. I'll just use my finger there. I know that can make people... It gives them a bit of angst when they just see me paint with my fingers. But hey, it's fun. Oh, let's see. I got a little bit of green into that yellow. Oh, Black Cleric, how's it going? Yeah, both of our teams are definitely, well, unfortunately, you know, the Wings, they had their thing. That was going for a while, and the Hawks had their chance for a while, and it worked. And then it just kind of stopped working really fast. Oh, is it great to see you painting so regularly, having a hard time keeping up with the comfort? There's a backlog. Well, I can uh, I can tell by where where you were, and I'm looking like, wow, that's that's one of the first army painting series. Wow, that's it was long enough ago that even the way all of the files are organized, like the the pictures, the video files, I'm looking around going, where the heck are these files? They're not even arranged the same way. That's how early some of those are. And actually, yeah, those are the all of the different army painting tutorials and such. Well, even, geez, the Dark Sword videos. Hard to believe I'm on, was it 35 now, I think it is. And then there's all the on the workbench. That I only know because I was trying to make a list for Adepticon, and I just I couldn't find everything I kept finding it's like oh okay yeah I forgot about these oh yeah there's basing ones over here see now that I've got some of the darker tones in place now I can start to find out okay what how light do I want these lighter areas to be none of this is any kind of a final final say yet on the colors here or the lightness of them Oh, let's go with a bit of this brown here on the the wood. We're going to do some darker glazes on that stuff too. But with the the wood, I like to have it have some greens in there, almost a, a grayish type of a tone. I wish I knew what some of these pieces of equipment are. I'm going to assume that these are your sort of stabby vampire killing things over here. This little bandolier on the back here. Could be wrong, but I'll just go with that. And this, this is going to be some situations here where I make the color lighter, then glaze over the top. 
Uh, you can glaze with the contrast paints too. That's that's certainly fine. Yeah, let's see if I can't steal a little bit of that blue for this side of the oh some kind of dagger here. Let's see what we've got here. So I cannot those I was gonna paint that as skin and then I realized no that is some kind of a, a glove there. Gonna do another little some glazing type stuff here. Again, making that almost a blue blue gray out of it. And then something that's a little more on the neutral side. And back over here, we'll... Especially away from where all those more orange-ish light sources are. That's a highly technical paint term right there, orange-ish. Oh, the Black Panther video. I think I've got him sitting right here. Where's he at? There he is. So again, another one of these things where it's, yes, he's black, but you got to see there's greens in there. There's some blues, some purple. But overall, what, you know, when he's, when you just see him on the table, he's going to register more as as black. You're not going to look at it, well, he's blue. Now I am going to... Good, you can see that in some of these recesses here. Let's toss in yeah, some some quickie little glazes here. He's got tons of leather pouches as well. Filling in that too. And we're going to hit... Just going to bring back some of that brownish gray poof over these areas here. And then we're going to, boom, hit that. Another one of those pouches there. And this is a constant little game of glaze and some mid-tone and then a little bit lighter and then back to some glaze we're going to do a bit of a glaze on the face now it's i don't think i'm going to do a whole bunch on this face here because you're just not going to be able to see it and it's really important that you just at least be able to see what the heck i'm doing here so now just added a bit of more of a red into that let's get the bottom side of the Leaders and take some of that away. Let's see what we can do here. Just drop a couple of brighter lights on this metal here. Give it a little bit of a sheen, but now I'm seeing how much do I have to work this back towards the your glowing arrow tip there. I'm just trying to look at ah, oh, so these are somewhat lighter. But when you look at the reference there, you can even see there's that sort of almost orange side light or black lighting there, or back lighting. That's it, not black lighting. Well, let's let's make these a little a little bit lighter. So I want to work some greens into here. Because if it is just one bluish gray, that's that's where things just start to get kind of on the boring side. Let's pop some more of this here, and then I'm going to go back. Get some of the, again, the, the white. I could use some of the fluorescent yellow here too, but I'm going to stick with uh, just the adding that ivory into the fluorescent with a touch of yellow. Back to that. See how much you, yeah, there you can see it now. The, the diode gets a little bit brighter there now. 
we will let it do a little bit of casting of light on that brim a little bit here now what else is it actually going to reach some areas here along the side of the crossbow I said I think periodically every so often I'll take you back to the Kickstarter page but it's in any event you can just go there yourself I will have the link in the description I'm gonna start putting more links in the description of that. I think I started put putting the links in the description of other live sessions that sort of match the the theme or the technique that you're that you see in a given live session or video and there's always at the end and they're appropriately called end screens which basically they're little links that take you to other videos I'll certainly probably link the Black Panther one to this because well it's another one that's about painting black because well okay it's it's nifty to see painting black on a space marine that's great but that could be very different on something that's more of a fantasy type figure so again back to my blue over here we'll mix it with that gray and here's a Another touch of the faded ultramarine. Oh, Christian, has it got to sleep? Yeah. Oh, Sander, how's it going? Oh, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, he was he was wild. He was one of, what, five so far of the Marvel Crisis Protocol figures that I've done. And I've got some more. I think I've got three more of those prepped, ready to go. The other thing I want to start to do is some of the terrain pieces. We got two of the taxis prepped. But I also have, from Green Stuff World, I've got these basically graffiti decals. And something tells me those are going to be fun to mess around with. Now I talked about some green. Here we go. Let's just see if we can use some of this yellow. And you can see by green, I just took some yellow and added it to that blue-gray. And this is not going to even translate as green, but it, what it will do is just be a little bit different color there than it had been. Just trying to change things up a little bit here, even on these pouches. And I know it's simple, it just it makes no sense. Why are you putting green in areas that should be gold or this or that or whatever? Because, well, that's nature reflects an awful lot of things. And that's what I'm trying to do is get some, some reflections here. All right, so I see I'm going to have to go over to my... Just give me one second over here. There. Because XSplit just does weird things, and now I can actually tell who's watching, or at least how many folks. Because if it drops to suddenly or whatever, that's when I know that there's frames that are dropping and that sort of thing. So I need to kind of know that. I'm also going to try and rework this filming area a bit so that I can have a second monitor and then it'll just be there on screen and I won't have to be shuffling back and forth between my painting screen and just the computer screen. Well, we're going to add a touch more of the lighter gold here. Just a few little highlights on those. Uh, what are we in about half an hour? Uh, we're about 45 minutes in on this. Now we've established some object source sledding. We've established some non-metallic metal over here. And here's a little, another little thing. So it's, it's sitting next to this red here. Well, it's going to do that. Then what we got to do is some of this. Got to reflect some of that red here. 
into our metal here. And that's what I just did, maybe a touch more as it gets closer. Oh, thanks, Sandra. Much appreciated. I know it can be a little bit scary for folks because it's, like you say, it is not the usual, oh, uh, a base coat and then a glaze or dry brush or any of those type of things. It's There's more. There's a lot going on. That's for sure. I'm going to go maybe in a bit more yellow here. There's a lot of mixing that happens, too. A lot of mixing of color. And people say, well, why, why are you only using six, seven, eight, nine colors? Well, part of it has to do with the days of 2D art when I basically did every single painting with the same eight or nine colors, max. But every paint line changes, every, every color dies. Every color is going to be wiped out at some point. Because these that I'm using to paint on here, those are, that's how Reaper paints used to come in those type of jars. And it wasn't necessarily that long ago, it wasn't 50 years ago that all Reaper paints came in containers like that. So paints change, they, colors go away, new colors come in, some paint lines just die away completely. And if you have the ability to just mix paints, well, now you just say, okay, fine, that that color that I love so much, that's gone. But I know how I can just make it out of these other colors that I still have. And that that's kind of a, that's a position of power to work from. Let's see, this is, I had that green sort of under there. Now we just sort of delicately start to arrange a, a basically a warmer brown over the top. Now, this one, it's an interesting thing to be dealing with here because it's just, everything is so tightly packed together. Now the face is another one of those challenges where you don't want to get well too bright too fast with anything because it is effectively sort of all in shadow. And you have this super wide brim hat, which apparently it is a magical hat. When, when I from what I could see of the character card, the hat has its own little magical properties of some type. Like I said, I wasn't gonna dive too deep into any kind of gameplay or stats or whatever. I, I guess part of it is. You sort of get trained from that where, let's say you're doing a battle report for a certain game system and you don't want to just be revealing a lot of stats that normally they would have to find out by getting the game itself. So again, this is not long ago. We were doing a, a glaze over the top of that, just taking some kind of a darker tone. And we'll do that even some more periodically in different places. Looking to get some, a couple of these, like we did on the other side here on the back. See, so just a couple of indications of something that's maybe glinting there. If it's all done in this bright yellow, I ah, just got to lose that whole effect and just look like some kind of yellow trim. Don't want that. Oh, Sander says, uh, yeah, I, I do not dare some stuff. In my it, yeah, there's, well, it seems like the the big three would happen to be the the object source lighting, the non-metallic metal, and it freehand too. And it's, it's funny because I'm sure you've seen enough of these where it's the thing that I go through first. It's the very first thing. We we start throwing that object source lighting on like we did here straight away. Freehand pattern, just toss that in as soon as you can. Because think about it, if if you if it makes you kinda antsy, you're and you've painted a figure for a while, I don't know, spent a couple hours or something like that on it, you are 
very likely to convince yourself that it's not worth messing up what you've been working on to try out and do a that freehand or whatever. And I, I tried to do things like this to make that seem a little less scary. All right, let, let's say I found out, oh, yeah, well, the hair is supposed to actually be green and not red. Well, didn't really invest a whole bunch of time in making it red in the first place. So if it has to be changed, ah, eh, no big deal. No big deal. I have the big three. You know what? That that needs maybe that needs a sticker or a T-shirt or something like that. Like, like a big bunch of trolls. Or wasn't there three trolls right with that tried making a stew out of Bilbo or whatever? You have three trolls and you give them those three names. Either that, or you find a fourth one, and it's like the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the painting, the painting apocalypse. Yeah, that's it. So, can you see anything? I'm just trying to get in on the face. It just really at a few things that are a little bit lighter. There's a whole bunch of filigree in here. My goodness. And a whole bunch of stuff that you just won't be able to see, so I'm not going to focus in on that too much. It is hilarious, though, to see the faded ultramarine blue here, and it looks so light, but actually it's really just a light middle tone at this point. Oh, hey, uh, T. Karcher, a big fourth would be making Fabril look like leather satin... Leather or satin rough cloth. Yeah, that's that's a big thing now is painting the, the cloth texture. I know I did, well, actually on that Black Panther, we did it on there. Not necessarily cloth, but it was, it was one of those suits that had a whole bunch of texture on it. A whole bunch of texture on it and tried to make it look like, gosh, I don't know, almost like a, a one of those diving suits or something like that. So let's hit some lighter lights here. Now I'm going to go into the, that's that pale green over there. Again, for those that didn't see from the start, using the Pro Acryl transparents and some of the opaques. Some of those opaques. Oh, and these are actually, right now, these are 3D printed, um, I know. I'm sure the, the game pieces will be of a different, material and like I said I will there's a link there's going to be not right now but as soon as I can do it there will be a link to the Kickstarter campaign so here we'll make that greenish color a little bit lighter and I'll work some of that into here A little bit down here, we're going to try to find some lighter greens even in these, these roots and vines over here. And again, we'll do some shading on that too, some more glazes. Just trying to figure out, okay, eh, do I want to go, maybe I do this all with these kind of pale greens and then do a more of that brownish glaze over the top then. There's different ways of getting those, those subtle values down in the crevices. You don't necessarily want all of your shadow colors well, you really don't want any of them, for that matter, to be just a basically a lighter version or a darker version of, let's uh, like if it's brown, you don't want it to be just a dark brown. Maybe actually something in the way of red is a is better thing to have in your shadows. So again, looking to add some 
A little bit of lighter tones here into some of these. This gold trim. Let's see, what do we have here? This is almost looks a little bit more like metal than wood, but when I look at the pictures, the the colors of that seem to indicate more wood than metal, but boy, it does sort of look more like metal. I'm gonna grab me something to drink here real quick. Now Aerox is off to work. Yeah, that's sure thing. Uh, but I tried to upload another uh, Patreon video basically since 11 o'clock this morning. I've been trying to upload that stupid video. But, well, scheduling became an issue, and Kathy essentially had to do not one broadcast but two. And there is not enough bandwidth to have both of those things happen at once. So... Basically, overnight tonight, once this is done, I will start uploading. That will be episode four of the Harad series. And that's that's Lord of the Rings. That's my Harad army. I think I've got one of the... Ah, there it is. So this is the series that I'm working on right here. Uh, did Episode one is the basing, and I'm using the Green Stuff World paint on that. So it's been really... Oh my goodness, it's been a brain teaser to say the least, or more like brain destroyer. Because again, every paint, well, you would hope that paints have different properties and qualities to them. And not everything is the same, because why the heck would you then want to buy all these paints if they're all just the same? With a slightly different label on them. But boy, does it make things difficult. I just have to, it's almost, well, it's like speaking a different language. I know I've said that before. Oh, the culture has, uh, just some Propel. It's sort of a vitamin water type thing since it's now 2.36 in the morning here. And I believe in the last two days combined, I might have gotten nine hours of sleep, maybe. That's probably including some naps that I've tried to take here and there. Now, that the coffee thing, I there was a time a few years, well, now several years ago, where I thought that could actually help. Eh, just caffeine did not really seem to work whatsoever. Basically, what I try and do is actually exercise right before one of these. It sort of gets you a little bit more awake and a little bit un, what would you say, unwound from being hunched up painting all day or what I was doing earlier today was prepping a whole bunch of figures. Well, guess what? For more videos and for Adepticon. So yeah, we're going to start to add some more darks in here because uh, we can't. It's, once you sort of establish the overall it's like a, what would you say, when you're building a, a house, you don't start with window treatments and roof tiles. You usually start with digging a hole in the ground. You throw some concrete and rebar in there, and then you go up from that. And that's what this whole shaded base coat thing is all about. I just, a little bit more water into this and then another glazer. I just I realize that to make that here stand out more, the shoulder just has to be darker even though I would prefer that it's actually catching some light. That's Maybe that's a good illustration of that context that I talk about all the time. Hey Paul, how's it going? Oh, let's see, Kamitrion has a question. I don't suppose you know, but I'm going to ask anyway. Oh, yeah, this is these new pots. Where are they? 24, 23 ounces. Oh, it's on here. That's 22 or milliliters, sorry, not ounces. These were supposed to be out and about much sooner 
but there's been a lot of craziness with container ships being kind of held hostage, basically. And then, of course, the your corona craze that's, that's going on now. So that has definitely led to some craziness with the supply of, of these guys. The... I think there was only a few colors where maybe they adjusted whatever the formula was. The idea is that the container itself is just, it's easier to squeeze and the top is a little bit different. And then there are some optional tops. Believe it or not, they, you can have different types of tops or nozzles for them. It, it's something that, uh, and that, let's see, I think they're going to, they've added, oh gosh, did you see the, the Dark Sword video that I did on the Kitsune figure. Oh, man, that was, oh, that was one of the Patreon ones. But there was six new colors that came out. Actually, this was one of them, and the blue-black was. And I actually did a video with just those colors. Oh, hey, Ken. How's it go? Well, good night, and yeah, I will be envious of that because sleeping is something I would really be loving to do right now. That's for sure. So if there is incoherence or something like that, as I speak here, that would be one of the reasons why. But boy, it's just, it's, it still amazes me how light that looks. And it is not a light color whatsoever. It, it's this. It's a dark bluish gray. And yet, because I've well, been able to get some serious dark colors in around it, Man, it just looks like it's like a highlight color or something. That's insane. So we can, you know, we'll go a little bit lighter with it, maybe. Uh, let's see, you get a net bigger pot. Sh yeah, I th think the old bottles, I think those are, speaking of eliminating things, I think they've gone away from those. And this is the new, the new size. And, well, I think that's the other reason why I started to kind of emphasize these because they are now basically almost the same size as the contrast paint jars. Maybe, I think the price is something like half as much. And they sort of last two to three times as long, maybe more. And especially with those transparents, like I've been trying to show, they, they can really do a very similar function very similar function now for those of you that maybe are a little bit new and you haven't seen some of the recent live sessions I've got the the great eagle that's a Lord of the Rings and now this is so tiny let me just get this safely here so this was actually three episodes long where are you there we go. So yeah, this big old thing. Just the base alone was one episode. Uh, the G only 18 mil. Holy smokes. Yeah, I, I think they are what, one third bigger at one half the price. Something insane like that. I'm going to try and work a little bit of Actually, I can turn up. Just let me turn up my brightness just a touch there. Yeah, now I, I don't know exactly what the price points are, and it could potentially be different depending on where you live. But just as I was talking to them, because we, geez, we had, I don't know how many hangouts and meetings on the, the pro acryls as those were as the concepts were being turned from concepts to and geez just talking about the paint jars and what shape and size they would be there's a whole lot that goes into it that you just wouldn't imagine what's the nozzle shape going to be where are you going to get these containers from This, yeah, that needs to be, I think that needs to catch a touch of light there. Let 
the face. Can I? No, I'm going to get one of these other ones here. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but I'm just going to see if I can't reach in here and at least try and pop the something that resembles an eye there. And I will go back here. This is again the transparent black, the fluorescent paint that was from Golden. Golden Acrylics. Oh, it's something like high flow or high flow matte or something like that. High flow ultra marat, ultra marat, ultra matte. Yeah, the yeah, other words that that'll be a struggle. Words will not be. <laughs> They won't come easy tonight, that's for sure. Although I did put some primer, the regular Badger Steino Res, the same primer I used on this figure, it covered those 3D printed pieces of terrain, and those are things that I, I'm going to try and make some videos out of. Just how do you paint that? How do you weather it using some of the same materials that we use on our miniatures a lot of that stuff from say Luke's APS and now it's time to maybe on this little oh gosh that's like a mini bayonet almost here on the edge of our crossbow Let's have that pick up just a few points of light there. And not wanting to lose track of where the object source light might fall to. And remember, we always, with the non metallic stuff, you talk about that chain of lights. That's what can help make it look metallic because it seems like the light is tracking on it. Whereas when you put it on, say, cloth or leather, that, that light effect is sort of spread out a bit. You can see we're starting to put some more delicate edges here on our golds. Uh, let's see, I had some contrasts as a birthday present last year at launch, but I'm never going to go back to them. Yeah, the, what was it, June? Yeah, I think it was mid-June when the, those things hit. And so many folks were, well, they just were having such a hard time with getting the, the Reaper clear paints. They were really asking me to find something that was an equivalent, and it turned out that the, Contrast paints sort of could be used the same way. So again, there's our there's your diode there, whatever that is supposed to be. We'll engineer a little bit of orange around that. We're going to do that here too, around the crossbow bolt. And I could use the, like I said, I could use the trans, or not the transparent, but the golden acrylics fluorescent yellow in there too. But I'll just go with the, I'll just use the eye, bright ivory, I believe. That's the pro acryl color there. And with that, I think I'm going to also try and let some of this. Glow color seep its way down. Oh, yeah, I think we need some here, too. And then now I'll go kind of in the opposite direction here. We'll take some of our red. That's definitely much darker. That will get some shadow areas into this because yeah the 
the glowing lights, it's going to cast shadows. It's it's a light source. And I think that was, oh boy, I was filming a video that had about 10 different light sources in it. And that's when I noticed, yeah, that light source really should cast a shadow. That shouldn't just be all light in there. Yes, I know it's a, it's a, it's object source lighting, which means it should cast a shadow somewhere. We did that on that base that I showed you, that big Hydra thing. There was lots of kind of debate, and there were some changes made on things to actually reflect that idea that light casts a shadow. Now let's see what I can do here. And apologize if I miss a question here in the in the chat. Uh, let's see the price difference and the quality. Yeah, the well, there's so many advantages with the the pro acryls that I can just use water instead of having to use the contrast medium. I can do the the thing with the the makeup sponges and wipe some of it away. It certainly is easier to do the freehand with the transparent paints versus say the the contrast paints the the reaper liners in clear they are really ideal for freehand the contrast paints uh, they can make life a little bit difficult for freehand and there's there's some paints that definitely as i see those are like no nope, i am not using that for freehand Because uh, like what I'm doing here with, with this, it seems a simple enough thing, what I'm doing. This was agonizingly difficult with, with a different paint. And I said, what in the world is going on? What What is this meant for? Why is it this thin and just not covering anything? I just couldn't understand. Yeah, we need to get some darks into this area too I'm just gonna make sure I didn't hit the off button here or the mute button on my mic because that's happened I think it happened once maybe twice when I went to record an episode and then spent two hours recording it to have no sound which meant spending another two hours doing the dreaded voiceover that I hate so much. I don't even like to listen to videos that are voiceovers. Oh, geez, Jack, how's it going? I, uh, geez, I have to, I'm going to do another meeting with Pete. Now, he said that something was supposed to be in the works where it would start to show up in stores. I think it's still a matter of the, the stock issue there because of the container ship and, well, now the whole virus thing going on. But I'll, I'll keep after it. I'll keep asking them, saying, hey, there's a lot of folks, my buddies in Australia, they want to know when's this going to happen. He's, I know we've been asked a couple of times about what well, we do painting classes or whatever in Australia, and that would be really fun. I, now, of course, the logistics of that is something that I cannot, I have zero time to try and figure out. So that would have to be somebody else's purview there to figure out how that would work. But if it ever does, that would be really, really, really fun. I know we wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be coming with boxes of pro acryls. Trying to sneak them in through customs in Melbourne or Sydney or something. Let's get a little bit here with their glow. And then I'm going to go back here with some of the, just another one of these darker glazes again. 
Let's see. Uh, oh, another Tasmanian. Yeah, that's. Well, let's see. Hawthorne. There's there's your team. Yeah, well, that you're not necessarily going to be a Hawks fan just because you're down in Taz. But hey. Oh, can we try? I do deliver to AU, but the shipment is higher. Yeah, that's. No, actually, there was. I know there was one thing where they were they shipped off an entire, oh, just a huge quantity of stock to Europe, and basically it was just lost. It just disappeared. It was like a, a month and a half's worth of stock or something like that, and it just. They had no control over it. It just vanished. It was gone. So I think that they've kind of been hit by a bunch of incidents like that. Just kind of those crazy things. Uh, I think too, maybe, I don't know, with Adepticon coming up, I, I don't know how much stock maybe they had to save just for that, just so that they can actually show it to people. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I don't know. Most things I don't know. So, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of little interesting. My goodness, there's a lot of grommets here. Wow. There's like a so it's not so much with the buckles, but boy, what it lacked in buckles, it made up in grommets. Oh, Mr. Karcher's uh, first step in Australia trip, get a million dollars. <laughs> well, it's you'd have to figure we'd we'd need to be there. Jeez, it's a week and a half at all it, to make it even possible. And then we'd have to figure out, well, when is it then that actual people can do a, a painting class? Because there's just certain points of the year in certain parts of the world where, well, just everybody's gone. So if you show up, they won't be here. Of course, you know, timing it, oh, I don't know, maybe for an Anzac Day game or something like that at the G. You know, there's accidents happen. Wouldn't mind that kind of an accident. So this is actually, I'm just working with some of the, the skin tone that I had. Like I said, I don't want the, the skin tone here to get too light too fast because that whole thing should be in shadow. And well, if you want that, the diode there around the eye to actually have any kind of glow to it, well, you need the face to actually be darker. You must have dark if you want to show light. Speaking of, we're taking our, our skin color that we made and making that just a touch lighter. Some fingers. Because it looks like on this hand you don't necessarily have the whatever those were. But, oh, geez, yeah, if, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, check out the, I almost called it a bolt-action battle report, the Lord of the Rings battle report. That's that new format. That's where I could, that's where I was drawing on the screen. That was, that was a blast. I got to admit, I had all kinds of fun with that tool. I really started to get a better handle on how it worked as as that video went along. But now I've got some of the nifty 3D terrain that I was hoping to, to use. And I'm starting to paint that stuff up. Making this a little bit brighter right there. Just see kind of what we did there. It's almost a bit like, geez, like a sky earth effect almost when you think about it. Yep, our winter is their summer. Well, geez, it was it was getting to be. I was hearing 50 degrees Celsius in some spots, but didn't it go from no rain, super hot to well, pff, 
just less hot, but then tons of rain and, and almost flooding, especially since with all of the fires burning away some of the ground cover. Here they just they were initially predicting six to ten inches of snow, which then became one to two, which then went back up to three or four, which then went up to seven inches and I mean I know there's some snow out there. I have no idea how actual much snow there is. And I know there's but what only places in the in some of the more mountainous areas where there's you get snow down there in Australia. Oh, from the opposite end of the island. Now, I know that Adelaide is sort of a, a wine country type thing. Well, I was speaking from about Australia and things coming from there to here. Actually, Victoria sent off a bunch of her miniatures. I'll be painting those up for Adepticon, so you'll be seeing those tutorials here. I, I really do try to vary things. Genres, right? There's going to be some historical things working their way back in here. Some Aeronautica Imperialis. Just a bunch of different things. Heck, even some cruel seas. Let's see, we're starting to just pick up a few little... That, that chain of highlights that I was talking about before. Jeez, I, I'm trying to think of all the different cities. Uh, Canberra, Brisbane... Yeah, Sydney, Melbourne, the, the usual's there, but there was there's a lot of places where people say, oh, hey, you could want to stay with us. We can paint miniatures and have fun. It would be fun. It would be fun to maybe even I don't know, go to a local park and play some cricket or footy. That would not be terrible. Let's see if I can't get a bit more. I'm going to take this blue here. See if I can... I'm going to take some of that green. Boy, that's going to be... That is uh, actually a Kelian green right here. That's This blue and the pale green together sort of make almost like an Achillean green. And I think you saw some of the tutorials I was I did there where the Achillean green was used sort of in this role. Yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty nifty there. Let's see. Oh, the, the Splintered Fang things? Well, actually, I think you've seen me do the, the live session on the, the lava ones. I'm just trying to get the Harad session out of the way because it took forever for that... What was that stuff called? The matte medium or matte thinner. It took forever for that stuff to get here. And I wanted to test it out on some figures first. What the heck? I'm sure... What is it? This... It's today now, Wednesday. I think this weekend I'll be doing some of the first episodes there. And oh, and the color test figure is going to be color test figures. There's going to be multiple ones. Just because it makes sense with the oils to work on more than one. So what I will do is, I think you've seen me do it on the live sessions. So I'll start out with three, but I'll just kind of take one through to basically completion. Just because that's, that's the best way to use the oils is to be working on multiple things. It makes no sense to just do one, one little figure with them. Because that series has to be out of the way by Adepticon, and I'm going to be... Well, I have to start Dull Amroth if I want to be doing battle reports. There's a little more of this, and 
I don't know if the Candish Forces are going to be an army painting series or not. Uh, I guess because, well, right now there's just, well, I've got the Cavalry. I would like to, well, I think the Chariot's just going to have to be its own <laughs> separate episode, I think, at this point. Yeah. Now this I can do some, oh, some foliage on here. I don't have it handy with me so I think I'm just going to continue with the painting side of this but I've got some nifty from oh gosh what is that gamers grass I think yeah I think they sent me some really neat tufts and then I've also got the Luke's APS and of course we still have all of our as I highlight that some uh, the green stuff world foliage too but here I'm going to go minimal with the foliage. Now the face I just got to... Boy, can I sneak this brush down in here and just bear with me here while I try and do this. That's again the flesh tone that I just mixed up myself. All right, if I turn it this way, I'm going to try and get the chin here. Yay. Upper lip bit on the lower lip. Now this, I'll leave that for now. Oh, AK Interactive, third generation acrylics. Oh boy, that, that, there's some weird, what's the deal with the tops on those things? Because it looked like a really unusual shape and what just made me and other folks a little nervous about those is that there was some of the same kind of contrast claims to those like it cures the common cold uh, it, it creates light in the darkness it it's it can destroy the one true ring of mortar it can do all these fantastic things and you know how you have those contradictory claims where wait a minute the laws of physics say if it's doing this it can't do that other thing because just physics don't work that way and it seemed to be making an awful lot of country, well, whatever. And then, uh, was it, Make Ammo, they're releasing their line of acrylics too. Heck, how long have I been doing this video here? Hour and 32 minutes. 14 new paint lines have been introduced in the last hour and 42 minutes, I'm sure. Somewhere. It's like every 30 seconds, a new paint line is introduced. And basically my, my view on that is when companies make new basing supplies or new miniatures, those, yes, we can use those. Just how much new paint do we actually really need? Now, if it's an improvement on the older stuff, that's fine. But I'm starting to see more and more paint lines that are my goodness, they're just so almost pigeonholed into one thing. Here's the one thing these can do. They're so specialized. That's it. Just incredibly specialized. Yeah, there was, there was some really weird tops, like a the white top, and it was almost shaped like a like a wingnut or a, or something like that. It was really strange. I did not know what I was looking at. I had no idea what that what that was about, and the make ammo acrylics. I just uh, I looked at oh they're oh, they're supposed to I think supposed to kind of be like contrast paints, where they're they're super thin. I have a feeling that they're a lot like the Badger Ghost tints actually. But it definitely, when I, I looked at the thing, it, it, it talked about to be used with an airbrush. And it's not like I don't use an airbrush. I use it all the time. I was just using one earlier today. But if you're making something that can only be used in the airbrush, then that doesn't have enough utility for me. Like the, the Steino Res, 
we brushed this on. Kathy just brushed it on to all the, the splintered fangs that we were doing for the charity thing. So actually here is, I'll be doing these and some other. Here's my splintered fangs for that charity thing that, that's going along with what she's doing. Uh, but the first one was done in a live session, so go ahead, check that out. And now oh, let's see, the MMSI guy is still meeting. I think they are. We have never actually been to one of those. Uh, the the oil brushes, well, yeah, I'm still using those, definitely. I love the oil brushes. Sometimes people, it can be difficult for them when they say, well, you love everything. You, you love their products. And they say, well, I like, I love this. I love that. This other product, they don't love it so much. It just, if it doesn't do what I need it to do, then I'm not going to love it. I just, I need, I need that utility that that it can do multiple things and be used in multiple ways. Again, some more back and forth with the glazes here. Is that on screen mostly? Not necessarily only just to make things darker, but maybe to get it away from the touch a bit away, away from that blue. So I'm going to go even lighter here. So I'm just going to take my, that's the, the off-white and the yellow. And there, so now we've got sort of our brightest point there that we can, yeah. So now we've got our, our glowing arrow there. Let's keep continue here with the outer reaches of that glow. Let's see. I'm gonna try and hit this trim that's up here. There, are these boy, these grommets are tiny, tiny little grommets. My goodness. Can't quite tell if that's uh, looks like it's the collar, some kind of a collar there. Let's see if I can. Again, we're we're back to the buckles here. Then there's looks like is it three of them or four of them here? I'm just gonna get some water in the, and this is the like I said the. The pro acryl stuff that is the this is not transparent it's going to definitely cover very well and third my side I see a row of three of those oh I need some reflected light here I, it's so interesting. This I've got definitely. We have some decent darks in there. If a color like this practically looks like a a highlight color, then we know we've got decent amounts of darks in place. And I I know people they've even just this week they were asking. So how long does it take to paint one miniature? It's really going to depend. You know, something like this, I would probably, so off camera, or whatever, maybe spend a few more hours if it's going to be used as a, what is it, a box art or something like that, or some kind of, and uh, some kind of photo shoot, because there's things that I just I can't get to here, like that face. It's really difficult to get to. Now. I'm not sure they could figure out any way to get a camera in there to see that face. But it's something that I have to try and get a brush down in there and, and do. Uh, 
But for me, I'm always working on tons and tons of figures at any one time, but quite literally hundreds of them. And just the way things are going now, potentially that number could start to approach the thousands. That could be hitting four digits, which is scary. Yes, I know. Okay, green and my golds. We're going to do that here. Just looking to pick up some of that. Mix it with the little touch of orange or yellow. Let's put some of that in here. There we go. Tones down that gold just a touch. And now I'm going to look for some uh, bit of reflected light down here. Inner part of the coat, I'm sure you really couldn't see anything there. Back to some dark shirt. Let's try and work in a glaze there. Hopefully you can see that. I know the crossbow sort of gets in the way. Let's see if I can't reinforce those separation of those fingers. And then this little oculus piece here. I'm going to get some darks over here and then Something besides just the red glow there. So it maybe has a little more of a metal look about it. I hope you can see that. Oh, let's see those green undead guys from lower and oh thanks the Oh yeah, there's a ton of videos and now I I have a live session. Well, it was probably a couple of months ago. Again, just look through the, the live sessions there and the, the playlist for that. And the uh, Army of the Dead will show up there. I've got some more that I'll be doing. I also have, let's see, where is, if I can even reach this guy here. Oh, it's going to be way too difficult to get to him. But I've got a whole bunch of other tutorials like that. I've also got the, oh, what is it, the King of the Dead and those, the Heralds, the two guys with the banners. I'm going to be doing at least one of those in a live session, too. Because uh, I need some more Army of the Dead. I did the Army Painting series. Let's see if I've got one in here. Just bear with me. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Yeah, so that's, there's one of them. Probably from the Army of the Dead series as opposed to maybe the one of the live sessions. But I'll definitely be adding more of those because, well, I need me some more Army of the Dead. And I'll certainly be doing a lot more Rohan. I'm going to try and convert some Rohan cavalry into Royal Guard. See, I'm adding some highlights here now. It, it's along the same type of colors that we used and highlighting the your black over here. It's got a little touch of green to it. And now I'm going to see if I can't well, let's grab some of. Kind of use that. It's almost again. Yeah, it's kind of similar to the flesh tone color in a way. Just gonna put some. Here we go. And then we'll do some glazes over the top of this. Probably take some of the, the transparent black and the transparent orange. Mix those together. And do some glazes there. Ah, 
think you can see this. Let's do over here. And I also probably take some of the, say, some kind of a green, mix that with black and do some glazes there as well. I'm just going to lighten up some of these. Boy, there's an awful lot of, it's not buckles, but there's definitely some, some straps here, leather straps all over the place there. There's some, some filigree here. We're going to try and bring some of that out. And then I'll go back into it, with, like I said, with some of those glazes here, some more orange into that. It's this constant adjustment of things. Oh, I know it's a, let's see, what about a live sessions with the bust? Oh, I've already got, geez, four of them. There's two of the uh, Blackheart busts, the Drogon and Vizirian. Yep, I, I did those. Those aren't all that long ago. Again, a few months ago. And there's also the Morticia bust that I did in oils. So I've got at least three Blackheart models bust videos, if not four. And there's there's more some uh, non Blackheart models busts that I'll be doing. Yeah, I have no idea if those are supposed to be metal or wood. I'm just kind of <laughs> I don't know, kind of going in between there, sort of playing both sides of that. Are they metal? Are they wood? I don't know. You would think if this is more of that vampire hunter type of thing, those would be wood. So I figured that's kind of safe to go with. Now I'm going to go back here with some, again, some glazing. So I got my black. We will go in with some red and a touch of that orange, and then it sort of makes it a bit of a brown. Yes, I could just use the transparent brown, but... I'm just too lazy to go and get that jar, so I'm just going to make some here. I'm thinning that down again just with water. And we're going to throw a glaze over the top of that and then just remove some of the excess with my finger. Make it even more thin down with the water. So remember we were talking about the using the green lighter colors and then dropping in some brown glazing in there like that now where we've just put some of these uh lighter colors here we will remember that glazing that i was talking about there a bit more here So we've got, I'm not, I don't know what's necessarily in the pouches here. She's got three of those. That, I almost thought maybe that was a vial of something, but maybe not. So these actually, you know what? That to me is going to read as metal. I'm going to see if I can't maybe change that to something that has a little more blue in it here. And that's going to go here away from where the obviously our your source lighting is uh, just doing that just to again create a little bit more differential than between where the where the glow is and the shadow parts of the metal but we still need to give it some Reflected light. And I'm going to throw just a few hints of that blue out there. I 
I'm going to take, again, this is the, what is it, the ivory, bright ivory, and we'll mix it with the transparent yellow. And I've got the sword hilt and handle here. That's really, it's almost more of a dagger, really, than a sword. <laughs> it's a long dagger or a very short sword, one or the other. Oh, let's see. Oh, they'll see you later. Oh, and Mandalore. How's it going? I know it has a different approach. Um, actually, it is zero difference than what you see here. Like I said, there is... Just go to the... I think it's just it's either Blackheart Models bust or it's just painting busts. It's It's another part of the playlist thing. Just head on over there. There's at least three of those. And from here, well, I've got five or six more then I'm oh yeah check out the one where it's a half sized or half life sized bust that's pretty wild but the the same what would you say concepts hold true and that you're going to try and create that structure as soon as possible if there's well there's no object source lighting on them but whether it's a bust a large creature a building Pretty much whatever, it's going to get a shaded base coat. That's just, you have to get those lights and darks, build that structure as fast as you can, get that primer out of the way, and then continue. And I do the same thing on tanks. I do the same thing on large critters, like the, the Hydra there. It was the, the same principle that if, well, like I'm doing right here, that I did on this figure. Because uh, those sort of, that whole notion of, of context where you need to see, okay, this, this yellow next to this, is it really as bright as I think it is? Well, like the, the darks that we put in here. Once I was I was trying to use I found myself using pretty dark colors as a highlight that's when I knew okay I've got my darker values pretty well established in there because that really dark color looks light like here this look at how dark that is compared to that white and yet this is right now I'm actually using this as a highlight color right here, and it's nowhere near white. Oh, hey, Gary. We have a Gary in the house. I think I think you are first and only Gary this time. Now I'm going to go... I mean, look at how much lighter that is. That's just insane. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, I know a different approach with button. Yeah, it is definitely not a different approach. I know some people, they, if it's a vehicle, they do this, or if it's a bus, they do that. For me, the brushes stay the same. The philosophy stays the same. It's bigger, and I get to play with more surfaces. Uh, I've been doing 75 millimeter stuff. Now, that's pretty much for the Patreon page. And I think I did, was it a two or three part episode there? I got the Creature Caster. Actually, that's a, you can, that's a, just a regular YouTube channel. I think I got two of the three episodes you can watch. And that's in the Creature Caster section. It actually, I never even realized that people have different approaches for different things until they started to ask me. And I'd say, no, it, it's, it's the same. It, it's, it's bigger, that's for sure. The scale is bigger. But that, that same notion of well, if I don't have a good you know, sense of value pattern there uh, of lights and darks, the bust won't look any better than a miniature. And the miniature won't look too nifty again without that that right allotment of the 
the lights and the darks and all that sort of stuff. And I just, boy, that, these light, lighter colors are, they are opaque. And it's just, it's, it's, I know it's, I've used these often enough to know that's the case. But because of the different paint that I've been using for the last several days or the last couple of days, it really, the difference really is magnified. So again, there's filigree here. Let's see if I can't get that little corner light. See if I can't pop a few lights here just to make those turn a bit. And on the hair, I'm going to see if I can't get some kind of highlights on there to give it that, that sparkle, that sheen uh, of the kind of the silky hair thing going on. So I can do that in there. Got my yellow in here. Let's see. Oh, I guess what I heard was that if the figure is bigger, you have more details. Mm, uh, no, actually, I, I've i never never done that with the bus. Now, of course, other people are going to have different concepts and ideas, of course. That's, that's all good. But for me, whether it's a 75 millimeter or a bust or whatever, it, it's all the it's all the same to me. I think I've got a 75 mil over here. I'll grab that in a second. Now, and you can see the difference. In, and this one was painted in oils. Here, let me just grab this. Ah, so I mean, it's it's kind of hard to squeeze her under the camera here, but uh, the principles again are are the same. The the lights on the face and even here on the the dragon and it was done in oils too so just because again they're they're different uh, let's see we've got ourselves a yeah here's another one so we've got our you know, the ob they're not object source lighting but we've got the same kind of blues there you can see the reflected light is the same I've got the same reflected light on that 72 millimeter figure same one here as we've got on this this witch hunter. And I noticed he actually had a little bit of a textured uh, cloth on his uh, robe there. That was, I forgot about that. That's uh, another one that I painted in some live sessions. Oh, hey Juan, how's it going? Thank you very much. And, uh, well, gracias. I can, I can say that. Boy, uh, Kathy's been learning her Dutch. What I need to do is have a just a whole little screen of greetings in many different languages here. Because I know, well, there was some Mandarin on New Year's Eve. There was some Greek, too, I believe. And at, at some point, I will work up one of those little lists there of greetings so that I can actually be considerate and address people in something that they're maybe a little more familiar with. All right, let's do some more here. Uh, Kamichi Wen says, good to hear it can be approached the same way as smaller minis. Yeah, I just, it really, I, and I'm not kidding, it was a total shock to me when people started to talk about this whole different approach they had, if it was either a bust or a figure or whatever, or even, like I said, a tank. Uh, watch the Cruel Seas, uh, those ship things that I painted, the one three hundred scale ships. I didn't do anything different on those than I've done right here with this figure. Because like anything else, it has no shape unless there's that that shading, and yeah, I mean, the principles of colors and values they kind of work the same no matter what it is you're working on. 
So I just wanted to get some. Yeah, tone that down. Let's see here with this. I still, I wish I knew what the heck those little things were. But I'm going to hit some of this with some. A couple of glazes again. Not necessarily to make it darker, but just to shift it away from the blue there. Alright, this. So I went in there with some of the reflected light, but now I've got to actually make that a little bit less. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to see if I can, right here on this edge, okay, take some other way. I'm just trying to make the air we go. That's better. Because for some reason, the part of the metal facing the sky or where the light source is was darker than the reflected light. And, well, that's another one of those things of, of physics or whatever, or, or fundamentals, I guess. Where I said, whoops, yeah, got to gotta do something about that. And I think I'm going to... Like I said, there's there's filigree in here. I'm looking to yeah fill in a little bit there and now how much there's something here that's I don't know if that's like a just a fold there or if that is part of this little apparatus here that's holding the bandolier of what I'm assuming are wooden stakes. Because they're they seem a little bit short to be crossbow bolts, so that's why I'm just gonna figure they are stakes that a uh, well, I guess no good witch hunter would be caught without them. Well, you'd be probably a dead witch hunter if you were caught without them. Just using a what the heck a little bit of red in there. Now I see more of those crazy little grommets on this side so let's can you see it? Yeah, all right, right here there's looks like a row of about three of those. And they're whew, they're small and they're real subtle in there. Well be interesting to see obviously anytime you go from sort of printed masters to the the figures that are in say the board game or whatever there, there's always going to be a difference I mean it's inevitable it was like that with the was that the song of ice and fire miniatures I'm sure I never painted any resin masters or printed masters I just was painting the production ones I guess you would say I'm going to throw a little bit of purple into this now. What the heck? We've played around with so many other colors. That it's been a while since I last injected purple, say, into the hair here. Looking to get, like I said, some couple of dark accents there. But even here, you see how it almost looks like there's some reflected light there, even on the hair. And as always, uh, I like to throw in some purples and greens together. It, it makes a nifty sort of a gray. I talk about that all the time in some of those those non-metallic metal lessons. Let's see, this is about two, yeah, two, two hours, four minutes, and you have to figure we were spending some time going over to the Kickstarter page. Well, now that we've actually got this one this far along, well, what the heck? Let's go to that. Let's go to the K 
campaign page here and let's see if we can't find I think we had to scroll down that far before we saw at least a unit card for it's ah here we go so Vanessa ear of ruin uh, okay we've got the shiny arm on the side so you can see what I was trying to do some blue black there see that red the really red hair and the shining bow there and that really went with more of the yellow on the rest of that bow but there's some definitely some big figures that are part of this like this guy here I mean my he is gigantic by comparison I mean look at that there's the rest of them All right, I got my I just I really love the the faded ultramarine blue and it's it's become the color of legend and we make lots of jokes about it but it is just a nifty it's just one of those colors that goes along the same lines as the the maggot white and the maiden flesh that I use all the time in the Reaper paint tutorials. It's just very, very flexible. I'm going to see if I can. There we go. Just going to try and enhance highlight there and there maybe even here on edge of the rocks nowhere near white but yet it really does start to boy it just doesn't take long for that to start to stand out I can do some green over here too I'll just make some green what the heck so there's a bit of just taking some of the transparent orange there makes green and now just a little bit on the the rock here sort of like it's a and there's some moss there or whatever I'll even throw some of that in the farthest reaches there in the shadow area of that cloak we're gonna put some here on our pouches I think there's actually yeah there's a strap right there. I need to hit that. And then I'm trying to get some reflective light right here. And watch where that brush stroke's gonna go. Just about like that. And now take some of that same green and get it on that that rock but we can still go so much lighter with this a couple of the I do some of the vines here there's a there's an awful lot of texture that was printed into that so I'm gonna utilize it same thing with this little branch slash vine over here I don't want to completely lose sight of the so the the browns and such that we wanted to add so look, I'm gonna take that same orange over here and now that's more of a grayish brown I wanted to make a little bit of dirt there almost. I'll do the same over here. I can always again access some of my lighter colors that I've just got out on the palette and the I think I did yeah, I described what this what palette is, which is basically just the Chinese food container. It's all it is. I I'm basically the top of the container is now the bottom and I've got a chamois sponge in there and a piece of parchment paper and I just I can't believe when I hear other people talking about their wet palettes and there's all this stuff they've got to go through they have to keep cleaning it out and it gets moldy 
I'm just saying that no, nah, it doesn't really happen with this. Okay, so I'd see that? Almost kind of a turquoise color there. Crazy as it might sound, it's some of it's even going to go like here on the rocks. Here where I, I got some metals. And something like that. Remember red and green is supposed to be opposites? Well, if you're going to have the glow of that arrow stand out that much more why not put some green next to it the sweet thing is that nobody's going to know that's what you did because it's just not going to register as green and we'll do some of that right in here we're going to do some of that up here too on the hat right in there now I'll see if it's going to let me, I'm going to go to my control specific. No, I don't think it's going to let me go. Yeah, it won't let me go any closer. That's just the, the limitation of the, uh, what is that, the, the Logitech series. It's just not the, a very narrow field there. Uh, oh, Kamitrion has to take off here. Oh, thanks for watching. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sleep, blessed sleep. I long for that for sure. But thanks, thanks for watching. It's uh, great to have you on again. Let's see, what we've got. Look at that. There's a little, almost a tan color there, but then it's this turquoise green. We're gonna do some of that here. It, it makes what would otherwise start to get a little bit boring. Because what well, we did, I'll show you the Great Eagle in a second. That was one of my also recent Lord of the Rings tutorial vids. Here, where are you? Okay, there. So this, arguably a monochromatic exercise, right? Lots of browns, but look at there. See, you got the reds in there. You put him back. And there was nothing, I mean, he was bigger, so it maybe took a little bit longer to paint some areas, but I did not approach him any different than I approached this. It was the exact same thing. A lot of the, well, I'm sure the folks that watched it or have watched it would hear the exact same things that I'm talking about here, same principles. And I'm going to get some of that. I gotta work some of that turquoise into here too, just to. Yeah. And, and nobody's really even gonna know it's there. They won't even be able to tell it is, but like I said, it, it just. It's gonna give a little bit more life to those middle tones and especially the shadow areas. back over here to the the skin tones that we made and see if I can't do something brighter in here just gonna try it yeah on the chin there and I really don't rely on skin tones the Funny thing is, I will use skin tone colors, but usually not on skin. <laughs> I generally will say mix those with black and other things to make leather colors. So once again, I think I'm going to, yeah, just on the leg there to lighten that up a bit. Once again, with the pouches, and then, now these must be the crossbow bolts in here and this quiver. I just, they gotta be. And eh, I'm gonna take some of this green again, and right at the, yeah. I mean, I, maybe, I don't know, it's sort of like a patina or something. I don't want to get that specific about it. And then to the 
elbow here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna so one another highlight dot to add. This needs it to remember that chain of highlights there. So I need to get into my yellow here. That's the transparent yellow mixed with some of the white. See how that we carry that highlight chain across, but I also need to catch a little bit of that filigree. actually a little bit of a diamond pattern in here yeah see I, okay just was able to pick up a bit of it there I was able to on this side and now let's let's do some of those and I always say just keep those in your back pocket don't do those too soon. We're going to look for some of those brighter highlights here on the on the golds. And as always, let's say they just get too bright. You notice them, you say, you know what? We just, we overdid it on those. Go back and just glaze those things down. I need to sharpen up that end but we still have to add some kind of a hint of reflection there yeah I think now I can see where I've got my got some decent greens and other things that work here on the hat We'll go another step lighter here on that elbow. And that's, I'm using literally pale green as the highlight there. Some more of these crazy little grommets here. So once once this is is done, I'll try and run over to the YouTube channel and put the link to this Kickstarter. This is the Storm Sunder Kickstarter. Uh, Lazy Squire Games, I believe, is your at least the. Yeah, you can head over to their Facebook page too, Lazy Squire Games, and see some of the other projects they've done, some of the other figures. Uh, Wild Ascent is another one. I've painted some of those miniatures. I actually meant to have some of them with me out here. But I'm going to be doing some more of these. So you'll you'll have a chance to see them then too. So I'm going to see if I can. There we go. So that goes kind of a dark, light, dark-ish. And, okay, I think we got that pretty well. So I might even, look at this crazy type of idea here. I'm throwing actually a few touches of that turquoise into the hair. That's in a red hair. But we want it to have a little bit of reflectivity also. So why not? Now these, uh, I'm looking at the, when I looked at the artwork, these sort of looked a bit more yellow here. See if I can maybe get some of that onto here. I just qu don't quite know what these are. Some more right here. I want to definitely get that one. And as always, boy, I. I I forgot it today. I, I subscribed to a channel today, but forgot to hit the all notifications bell. So I'm going to be waiting.
for a notification that, well, it'll eventually show up. It'll probably be well after they were live or whatever. So, yeah, click the, the all notifications bell. And I don't know if that's more difficult when you're doing it on a mobile device than, say, just on a on a laptop or computer. But, yeah, click the, the all notifications thing, and then you'll know when one of these is happening. I st still am bound and determined to try and do one of these not in the middle of the night for North America. But unfortunately, Kathy, she streams during the day, and we can't both be streaming at the same time. Uh, I've tried to do those on the weekends, but that really doesn't necessarily work too well. There's a little bit of, the, again, the purple, the black mixed together. And I'm going to try it right there we go. I needed to solidify that this pattern here a little bit. I'm going to get rid of some of the excess there. I just need some straight up dark in here too. So pardon me while I throw another glaze in there. So this is yeah been the first first miniature from the Storm Sunder Kickstarter. More to come. Some will be probably either more recorded tutorials or Patreon tutorials, and that is probably going to flash across the screen here real soon. The the Patreon page. You do the Army Painter pledge level. And now you're basically getting 300 hours or so <laughs> of video tutorials. And they are just on everything imaginable. The, the, the dark sword figures, object source lighting, basing, true metallics, non-metallics. And I, I, they're constantly being added to all the time. And there's always new paints, like uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff with the Turbo Dork paints to do that, that true metallic metal effect. I've done that before, too. I did the entire Necron army painting series in that technique. So I said, oh, some of the other stuff here that I just cannot reach when you guys be able to see it I'm gonna do that I'll just do that off camera so I just want to say thanks to everybody that that stopped in too it is always appreciated and never never hesitate to you know ask a question or something like that that is no problem but thanks again everybody and I'll catch you on the next episode here as I do my live sessions so take care, everybody, and happy painting.